Good morning, Greystone. Hello, everyone. Come on in, take a seat. It is so good to see you all today. If you are new, we have a communication card in front of your seat. You can just fill that out real quick. Um, but for the rest of us, um, if you were here a couple weeks ago, we did more of a stripped down acoustic Sunday. And we really loved that. So we're doing that again today. And we're, pro we're, we're probably gonna be doing that like once a month this summer, just for fun. Um, give some of our people a break, but it's also, in my opinion, a really cool time where we get to kind of take out some of the clutter and the noise, even though I honestly love it when we have a full band, it's my favorite thing. The musicians are incredible. Um, all of that stuff is really good, but sometimes it's really nice to just strip everything down and remind ourselves it's not all about the noise and the chaos and no matter how incredible or awesome it is, sometimes it's good to just remind ourselves that hey, these words that we're singing are really, really important. And focusing more on that is sometimes what our heart and our soul needs. And I think for a lot of us, this season is really busy and crazy with school ending and summer happening. And it's a lot of change and transition. And I know a lot of us here at the church are feeling that. And um, it's good for us now, I think, for our souls to just kind of take a rest moment and say, Lord, I just wanna hear your voice. I just want to sing these words that are meant to glorify and praise your name. So that's our goal this morning. So why don't you go ahead and stand with me and let's sing together. To me, like weakness is a canvas for your strength. My story isn't over, my story's just begun. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Ooh, lay your burden. shame at the door it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, you're in the father's house arrival's not the end game the journey Perfect. You just wanted my heart And the story isn't over If the story isn't good Failure's never final When the Father's in the room Failure's never final When the Father's in the room Oh, lay your burden shame at the door it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, you're in the father's house in the father's house yeah prodigals come home the helpless find hope Love is on the move when the Father is in the room. Prison doors fling wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the move when the Father is in the room. Miracles take place, the cynical find faith. Love is breaking through when the Father is in the room. Jericho walls are quaking, strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the Father's house, check your shame. 
check your shame at the door. It ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. Hey. And I've lived storm. I'd have proved your faithfulness And I've seen miracles my mind can't comprehend And there is beauty in what I can't understand Cause Jesus sits you Jesus sits you Oh, I believe you're the wonder-working God you're the wonder-working God All the miracles I've seen Too good to not believe You're the wonder-working God And you heal because you love All the miracles we'll see You're too good to not believe Too good to not believe Too good to not believe can't resurrect a man with my own hands just the mention of your name can raise the dead and all the glory to the only one who can Jesus it's you Jesus it's you You're the wonder-working God All the miracles I've seen Too good to not believe You're the wonder-working God And you heal because you love All the miracles we'll see Yes, you're too good to not believe Too good to not believe Too good to not believe after everything I've seen, you're too good to not believe, too good to not believe, too good to not believe, yes. Cause we've seen cancer disappear, and we've seen broken bodies healed. So don't you tell me he can't do it Don't you tell me he can't do it We've seen real life resurrection We've seen mental health restored Don't you tell me he can't do it Don't you tell me he can't yeah. We've seen families reunited We've seen prodigals return So don't you tell me he can't do it don't you tell me he can't do it We've seen troubled souls delivered We've seen addicts finally free Don't you tell me he can't do it Don't you tell me he can't do it And we'll see cities in revival And salvation flood the streets Don't you tell me he can't do it don't you tell me he can't do it We'll see glory fill the nations Like the world has never seen So don't you tell me he can't do it Cause I know that he can No, I believe You're the wonder-working God yeah. You're the wonder-working God All the miracles I've seen you're too good to not believe You're the wonder-working God yeah. And you heal because you love All the miracles we'll see You're too good to not believe Too good to not believe Too good to not believe After all we've seen, all we've seen You're too good to not believe 
believe Too good to not believe You're too good to not believe yes. Yeah. Well, Greystone, thank you so much for singing with us. Thank you so much for being a part of this morning. Why don't you go ahead and have a seat? Celebrate everybody who is baptized. <laughs> Easter Sunday, last Sunday, the, the Sunday uh, before. I want, I want to celebrate in 2022, the first four months of this year, we've had 101 people crash the waters of baptism at Graystone Church. So that is incredible. We, ha we have been praying for revival. We have been praying for, for God to move. We've been praying for God to change lives for all eternity. And we are in the midst of revival. We are trusting God this year that the Lord is gonna add to our number daily those who are being saved. So we're trusting for 365 baptisms in 2022. So we're believing in faith for... a. 264 more, those of you who are good with math, 264 more this year. So we're believing in faith that God is gonna do that. I wanna celebrate Easter with you. Uh, last Sunday, my pastor was here, uh, Dr. Dean Register. He did a ph phenomenal job. If you haven't heard the message, watch the message. Go back on our website uh, and watch it. He talked about not bailing out, you know, sticking with God to the end. Um, but I wanna celebrate Easter with you because I didn't have an opportunity uh, to do that. And I know I'm so proud of everyone for inviting your friends, inviting your family, having people uh, sitting with you. And so Easter Sunday, we had 2,550 something people at Greystone Church. <laughs> so it, was a, it was a big Sunday and uh, that was up over 1,000 people from the previous year. Okay, so God is moving, God is working, and, and God's using you guys. And I told y'all, I told y'all it was gonna be the best Easter service ever, right? Did, did I not lie? So uh, super excited about that. And uh, I brought my cross today uh, from Easter Sunday. And I hope this cross is very special to you. And I talked with several people who they were gonna paint their cross, they were gonna put uh, their favorite Bible verse on the cross. One lady even shared with me that she was going to put her cross, she was gonna have her son put her cross on her gravesite. Like that's how much this cross meant to her. And so I want you to put this in a special place, keep it where you can see it, and just be reminded of what Jesus Christ has done for you on the cross. And as we celebrate at Easter, we have traded in our pain, we've traded in our brokenness, we've traded in our sorrow, we've traded in our shame, we've traded in our guilt, and we have received the cross of Christ. The old is gone, the new has come. You have received God's love and his grace and his forgiveness. He's made you whole again. There's nothing lacking in your life because you are complete in Christ, okay? So... 
I, w- I wanted to share, share this with you, and, and, I, and I briefly mentioned it at one of the services. I can't remember, you know, all the services run together for me, okay? They just, they just kind of all run together, and I can't remember what I said in one and the other, and, um, but this seemed to resonate with people, and so I want to go deeper into it today. Uh, but all, all of these crosses, and I appreciate all the men who helped make these crosses. We had close to 2,000 crosses uh, for Easter but all of these crosses are made from woods of pallet. So we were collecting these woods of pallet, uh, pallet wood. And so just as the vase was, was handmade and unique, and uh, these, every, every one of these crosses is unique. Uh, every one of these crosses, these, these woods of pallet, had, had been on different journeys. Some of the journeys had been far, some of the journeys had, had been short. Uh, some of the crosses were more weathered than others, so, some are newer than others, and every, every one of these pallets uh, carried different loads, right? Some of the loads were heavy, some of the loads uh, were light. And these crosses are, are symbolic of our own lives because we, we've all been on different journeys. We've, we, we've all been on different journey. We all have a different story to tell. Some, some of our stories are similar, like all the crosses were the same size, but we, we've all been on a different journey. And we've all carried different loads, right? Some, some of our loads have been heavier than, than others. Some of our loads have been lighter. Some, many of us have, have carried um, burdens. And so some, some of our crosses are older, younger. Uh, th- this is symbolic uh, of our lives. And so I wanna, be, I wanna be perfectly clear here. All roads do not lead to heaven, okay? There's only one road that leads to heaven. That is the road through Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So the only way to get to heaven is through faith in Jesus Christ. It is a, it is a narrow road. Uh, very few people are on this road. We're, we're gonna talk about that uh, in, a, in a little bit. But all roads, and this is point number one, all roads can lead to the cross. Okay, all, all roads can lead to the cross. Country roads and downtown roads, windy roads and straight roads, long roads and short roads, broken roads and new roads. It doesn't really matter what road led you to the cross. And it doesn't really matter how long the journey took for you to get there. Now, I think the best testimonies are are those who grew up in church, they, they had Christian homes, they were, they were dedicated, you, you came to faith early. Yours was a short road to the cross. Those, those are the best stories. But it really doesn't matter your story. Now your story matters because that's what God's done in your life and that's your testimony. But what the most important thing, the thing that really matters is that you've come to the hill of Calvary. You have come to the cross of Christ, and Jesus Christ has changed your life. Like your salvation is in him. You have trusted and put your faith in Jesus. Now, that's what I wanna talk about today. The title of today's message is A Journey from the Cross. I wanna talk about the journey from the cross. The cross is the starting point. The cross is the starting point of your faith journey. The cross is not our destination. The cross is the starting point of our new life in Christ. It's just the beginning. Heaven is our destination. And now we're on this journey from the cross to heaven, this this journey of faith. And every single person, every, every one of us, here at the Azure campus, the Walton campus, the, the Oconee campus, everybody watching online, you are responsible for your own journey from the cross to heaven, okay? I'm not responsible for your journey. Your small group leader is not responsible for your journey. Your spouse is not responsible for your journey, right? You are responsible for your journey. Now I'm here to help you. I'm here to teach you. I'm here to to shepherd and guide and and teach and and rebuke and challenge. 
I'm here, here to give you a model and example. Jen, Jennifer's here to give you a model and example. We're trying to live our lives as best we can to be, to be a model and example. But ultimately, it's up to you. <laughs> it's just your choice. And you get to choose how you live your life from the cross to heaven. What journey will you take? Who is going to go on this journey with you? And then how are you going to use what God has entrusted to you? God has entrusted to all of us time, talents, treasures. And it's up to each of us to steward those resources in the best way that we possibly can. So you're responsible for your journey. Now, if you have kids, you are responsible for your kids' journey. Like, if your kids are, are still living under your roof, whether they're in elementary school, middle school, high school, maybe they're 28 years old living, living in your basement, uh, whatever the case may be, right? If, if they're living under your roof, you're responsible for them. It's your responsibility. Their, their spiritual journey is your responsibility. And if your kids are not in church with you today, that's on you. That's not on the kids. The kids aren't old enough. They're not spiritually mature enough to make this decision. If you were to have come to 13-year-old Johnny Howes in South Mississippi... And you said, Johnny, do you want to you play ball or do you want to go to church? 13-year-old Johnny's playing ball. <laughs> if you come to 15-year-old Johnny House and say, hey, do you want to go to Wolf River and do some fishing and do some water skiing and hang out at the sandbar on Sunday? Or do you want to go to church? 15-year-old Johnny House is going to Wolf River. If you come to 17-year-old Johnny House and say, do you want to sleep in? Or do you want to go to church? 17-year-old John House sleeping in, right? It's our responsibility as the parents to have our kids in church, to have our kids on Wednesday night coming, coming to the Wednesday night. They're not spiritually mature enough to make this decision on their own. It's part of our responsibility as parents. Now, on Easter Sunday, close to 2,000 people, 2,000 adults and students walked out of here carrying a cross. I want to talk a little bit today about what it means to carry our cross. What, what does it mean to, to carry this cross? What, what does it mean to be a true follower of Jesus Christ? We're in Luke uh, chapter 9, verse 23 and following. This is Jesus. Then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you'll save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but are yourself lost or destroyed? A true follower of Jesus Christ gives up his or her way for God's way. When you're on the journey from the cross to heaven, you're not taking your way, you're taking God's way. It's not your path, it's, it's God's path. Uh, Jesus taught in Matthew 7, 13 and 14, this from his famous Sermon on the Mount. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and the gate is wide for many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few ever find it. Very few people find the narrow road to heaven because it is a difficult road. The road to heaven is a difficult road. So that so we're to take up our cross daily. Well, what, is it, what does it mean to, to take up your cross daily? Jesus over and over again says that there's a cost to discipleship. There is a cost to following Jesus. 
It says, bur, bur, you know, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. Like there, there's a cost to following Jesus. I went back and, and reread one of the, the classics of the faith this week, The Cost of Discipleship by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And in this, I love what he says. He says that, that it's, not, it's not a cheap grace. Following Jesus is not a, it's not a cheap grace. It's not an easy believism. It's a costly grace. It's an amazing grace, but it's, it's a costly grace. It cost Jesus his life. And following Jesus cost us our lives. We're to take up his cross daily. True discipleship is saying, I'm not going my way, I'm going Jesus' way. Some, some translations say we're to, to, to deny ourselves. We deny ourselves and take up our cross and we follow him. We're, we're to die to ourselves. Now let's, let's look at the, the bigger context as Jesus says what it means to follow him. He's having this conversation with his disciples. And he says, well, who, who's everybody saying that I am? You know, what's, what's the word on the street? And what are, who are people saying that, that, that I am? And they say, well, some people are saying Elijah and some people are saying John the Baptist and some, some people are saying a prophet or a teacher. And then Jesus asked them, he says, well, who do you say that I am? And that's a good question for all of us to ask ourselves. But who, who do we say that he is? And this is where Peter uh, makes his confession there at Caesarea Philippi. He says, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God, you, you are the Messiah, you are the, the king. And so, so it's in this context that, 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 that Jesus shares these words. And we'll go back to verse 21, he says, Jesus warned his disciples not to tell anyone who he was. So they've established who he is. He, he's king, he's Lord, he's, he's Messiah, he's Christ. Jesus warned his disciples not to tell anyone who he was. Then he says, the son of man must suffer many terrible things, he said. He'll be rejected by the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He will be killed, but on the third day, he will be raised from the dead. So, so it's in this context that Jesus is talking about his sacrifice. He's talking about his suffering. He's talking about his death. He says, this is where I'm going. And then he looks to the crowd and says, if anyone would follow me, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you'll lose it, but if you give up your life for my sake, you'll save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but are yourself lost or destroyed? And so, so it's in this context that Jesus is talking about his, his laying his life down, his sacrifice, his suffering, him dying on the cross for our sins. And then he says, if you want to follow me, you're gonna follow me into a life of sacrifice, a, a, a life of suffering, a life of death to self. We're to die to ourselves so that Christ can live through us. Galatians 2, 20 says, I've been crucified with Christ. So, so when we become Christians, we are crucified with Christ. It's a putting to death of the old self. I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And so, so to carry the cross means to die to ourselves daily. I've been crucified, I no longer live. It's no longer little, little Johnny House, right? It's now Christ living through me. Now, salvation is a one-time act. It's coming, to the, it's coming to the cross. It's coming to the altar of God. And it's saying, I do. I surrender my life to you. But then it's a daily act of surrender. It's a daily act of sacrifice. It's a daily act of denying ourselves and taking up our cross daily and following Jesus. It's very similar to the marriage relationship, right? Marriage is a, a one-time act. Like, either you're married or you're not married. There, there is no really in between like being married and not being married. Like either you're married or you're not married. Either you've come to the altar of God and, you, and uh, the altar of the marriage altar 
You walk the aisle and you, you look that person in the, in the, you know, you exchange rings and you say, I do. I surrender my life, I commit to following you. My old life of singleness is gone and now the two have become one. It's a, it's a one-time act, but marriage is a daily surrender. It's, it's a daily, I'm putting my spouse's needs above my own. I'm like, as, as, as Christ laid his life down for the church, I'm to lay my life down for Jennifer and Jennifer is to follow me, right? It's a, it's a putting the other person first. And it's the same in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes, you become a Christian, it's a, it's a one-time act, but every day we're saying, I'm losing my life for Jesus. Not my will, but his will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done. We're to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. You know, Jesus isn't just a part of our lives. So, so it's not like, oh, I'm, just, I'm carrying my cross I got my cross in my back pocket. It's my good luck charm. Bless me today, God. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Help me hit that home run for your glory. Give me an A on that test. We see the blue lights coming up behind us. Oh God, please get me out of this. <laughs> Help me close this deal. Help me make a lot of money. I got my good luck charm. Got Jesus with me everywhere I go. Now, Jesus isn't just a part of our life. He's, he's not in our back pocket. <laughs> he is at the center of our lives. We've been crucified with Christ. He is sitting on the throne. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the boss. He is Lord. And we are to submit and follow him to deny ourselves and take up our cross daily and follow Jesus. We're losing our lives for him. Wherever he is leading us on this journey from the cross to heaven, we're going. It doesn't matter if the journey's safe or, or not safe. It, it doesn't matter if, if the journey's a smooth road or it's a, it's a bumpy road. It's probably going to be a bumpy road. It's a difficult road. It's, it's a challenging road. Uh, the way of the cross is a difficult path. It's completely different than the world. Like the, the broad road that leads to destruction that everybody's on, it's very, very different. The road from the cross to, to heaven, it's a very different road. The way of the cross is to deny yourself, to die to yourself, to, to lose your life, to put other people above yourself. It is a path of humility. It's a path of servanthood. It's a path of giving generously. Now, in the end, there's a great reward to this life. We have all the incredible blessings that, that God has given us. But there can be no resurrection if there is no death. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? There, there can be no resurrection if there is no death. If you never die, there's nothing to resurrect. But if you die, you can be raised to life. Now this week on the Family Goals podcast, which I'm encouraging ever, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, please subscribe, Family Goals with Davey Pollock and Pastor Jay. We're trying to get more people to listen to it. We're trying to get the word out. So if you'll help us get the word out, leave a review, all those great things. But this week on the podcast, it, it comes out tomorrow morning. We had the honor and privilege of interviewing uh, Coach Tony Dungy. And Coach Dungy's a Hall of Famer, NFL. He's a Super Bowl winning coach. Uh, it was such an honor to, to talk with him. I'm going to let you know ahead of time if you listen to it. I didn't have my A game uh, when we were interviewing him, there's a few uh, awkward silences that happen uh, as, as I'm interviewing him. But part of that was I was completely blown away by his faith and his spiritual maturity. And typically when, when someone says something, I'll, I'll kind of chime in with a Bible verse or kind of, but he was already quoting the Bible verses. Right? You know, I'm like, it was incredible. And his favorite verse he shared with us is Matthew 16, 26. And this is 
the same account, but it's Matthew's account and not Luke's that we're looking at today. And in Matthew 16, 26, it says, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? Now, Tony Dungy, he has everything that the world wants to have. He has fame, he has success, he has, he has wealth. I mean, he's in the Hall of Fame. He's a Super Bowl winning coach. He has everything that the world has to offer, but he is choosing a different path. He's on that narrow path that leads to eternal life. Coach Dungy and his wife have 11 children. I'm gonna say that again. <laughs> Coach Dungy and his wife have 11 children. We've got our hands full with three. Okay, Coach Dungy has three biological kids and eight adopted children. And they work with the Crisis Pregnancy Center and the Crisis Pregnancy Center reached out to them and said, hey, we have a newborn child coming. Would you like to adopt this child? And they pray about it. And they brought this child in their home. None of these eight adopted children are siblings. Eight different times, the Crisis Pregnancy Center reached out to them and said, would you like to adopt a newborn? And they said, yes putting other people above themselves. And I talked with Coach Dungy about, you know, the Bible talks a lot about caring for orphans, caring, uh, caring for widows, and we, we talked about that some. And then he shared with me that he was involved in prison ministry. And he was blown away when he first got involved in prison ministry because he was, he was thinking that, uh, you know, these prisoners are gonna be like hardened men, like, 40, 50, 60 year old men. But when he got into the prison, what he realized there were a lot of 18, 19, 20 year old kids. And then Coach Dungy quotes Matthew 25. He says, Whatever we do for the least of these, we're doing for Jesus. And that, that really struck a chord with me, and that leads me to, to my last point, I wanna go deeper into this, is a journey from the, from the cross is a life of doing. The journey from the cross is a life of doing, and I, I wanna read that passage that Coach Dungy quoted in Matthew uh, chapter 25. This is Jesus teaching. Most scholars believe this is Tuesday of Passion Week, so it's a couple days um, before the Lord's Supper, a couple days before the Last Supper, and then you know, three days before Jesus dies on the cross. And so Jesus is giving his last instructions to his disciples, and he's teaching about the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 25, verse 31. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne. So, so he's talking about the second coming of Christ. We're, we're talking about the end times. All the nations will be gathered in his presence and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you, are, you who are blessed by my father and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous ones will reply, Lord, when do we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink or a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing? When do we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it for one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those on his left and say, away, from, away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger and you didn't invite me into your home. 
I was naked and you didn't clothe me. You didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. Very strong teaching from Jesus, talking about the second coming of Christ. He says he's gonna gather all of us, all the people from all the nations. He says he's gonna put the, put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Now, it's interesting, how does Jesus differentiate between the sheep and the goats? How, how does he decide which one's the sheep and which ones, are the, which ones are the goats? It has everything to do with what we do. It has everything to do with caring for the least of these. Jesus says, whatever you do for the least of these, you do for me. And whatever you did not do for the least of these, you did not do for me. And so when we care for the unborn children, we care for the poor, we care for the prisoners, we care for the widows and the orphans, when we clothe people, when we invite people into our homes, we are caring for Jesus. Whatever we do for the least of these, we're doing for Jesus. It says in Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's handiwork. We are his workmanship. We talked on Easter that, that we're fearfully and wonderfully made, that he is the potter and we are the clay and God is molding us and shaping us and, and making us in, into the, the person that he wants us to be. It says, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So God has created us to do good works. Now, we're not saved by our good works, but, you know, in the, in the previous verses, Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says we're, we're saved by, by God's grace through faith. We're saved by his amazing grace. It's not a cheap grace. It's a costly grace. But we're saved to do good works. The, the journey from the cross to heaven is, is, is a life of doing. Doing for the least of these doing good works, serving others, putting others uh, above ourselves. It's, it's, a, it's a life of humility. It's, it's caring for the least. Of, and Jesus says, whatever we do for the least of these, we've done for him. I wanna, wanna ask you today, are, are you carrying your cross? Is your cross in your back pocket and it's just kind of a good luck charm and you're hoping that God blesses your life and your family and your business? Or is Jesus on the throne? And you wake up each day and you say, God, I deny myself. I die to myself. I'm taking up your cross daily and I'm following you. Whoever loses his life will find it. And I love, I love what Coach Dungy said is, is quoting Jesus. Uh, what good is it to gain the whole world, yet forfeit your very soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? So by way of application today, I wanna encourage you to make sure that you're on the journey to heaven. Make sure you're not on the broad road. Make sure you're on the, the narrow road. Make sure that you are going to be on Jesus' ride, that you're gonna be one of his sheep. And if you have any doubts about that, I wanna encourage you today to put your faith and trust in Jesus. The second thing is we wanna take as many people as possible on the journey to heaven with us. Like that's, that's why we're still here. There's still time to take as many people with us. I mean, 
More than anything, I want my kids to go. One day I want my grandkids to go. My family, my friends, my neighbors. I wanna take as many people with us as, as we possibly can. Next Sunday's Mother's Day. It is going to be a very, very special day. And Mother's Day is the third highest attended Sunday of the year. I don't know if you guys realize this or not. Easter, Christmas Eve, Mother's Day. And just as I encourage and challenge you guys to have someone sit, sitting with you on Easter, I wanna encourage you to have someone sitting with you on Mother's Day. It's gonna be a powerful message. Jennifer has been preparing this for a couple months. And every time Jennifer preaches, everybody says, well, you're not even the best preacher in your family. <laughs> Y'all can tell me that joke next week. I, I, yeah. <laughs> but for the moms, it's gonna be a special day for you. We're gonna celebrate you and we're gonna do family pictures and all that. But this is your opportunity to have your kids in church with you. Because everybody's gonna say, well, mom, what do you want for Mother's Day? And you can say, I just want you to sit in church with me. I wanna have my kids in church with me. If you're a grandma, this is your opportunity to have all your grandkids with you. When they ask you what you want, I just want you to be in church with me. I'm excited my mom's gonna be here next week uh, with, with us. It's a great opportunity to invite your mom and for moms to make sure that your kids and your grandkids are in church with you. If there's anyone we wanna make sure who's going to heaven with us, it's our kids uh, and our grandkids. So let me, let me close this out in prayer. God, we thank you so much for Jesus' death on the cross and what that means for uh, each of us. Uh, we are saved, God, by your amazing grace. It's not a cheap grace. It's a costly grace. It costs you your life. And when we commit to uh, commit our lives to you, it, we're surrendering our lives to you. I pray, God, there's anyone here, anyone watching, anyone listening who is unsure of their salvation today. I pray that they would receive your amazing grace they would commit to following you, going down the, the narrow road that leads to eternal life. And God, I pray as, as we are on this journey from the cross to heaven, uh, that we would deny ourselves and take up our cross daily and follow you. God, that we would put other people above ourselves, that we would live a life of humility, a life of servanthood, a, a life of, of doing for others, doing for the least of these. And it's you who's actually doing the work through us. And I do pray, God, at the end of our lives that, that you will say to us, whatever you did for the least of these, you did for me. And you will say, well done, good and faithful servant. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Greystone, well, we are going to move into a time of response. We're going to stand together. Um, we have the response station set up here. We have the Lord's Supper here. We have our hope chest here. If you have a um, prayer or request to put into the hope chest, you can. And then we also have our prayer team in the back if you would like some prayer. So if you will stand, we'll go ahead and worship. Jesus. 
is the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be in this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the seas and Should I ever need reminding Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears a burden Another died for me. There is another in the fire. All my dead left a tent beneath the waters. I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore, yes. And should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I won't bow to the things of this world. No, I won't. And I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire. Standing next to me, there is another in the waters, holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding what power sets me free, there is a grave that holds nobody, and now that power lives in me. There is another in the fire. Oh, another in the fire oh there is another in the fire oh there is another in the fire oh I can I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between where it's thin. I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. Nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us. stands between you and I no no and there is no other name that the name that is Jesus he who was and still is and will be through it all through it all so come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning I know I will never be alone I know I will never be alone There'll be another in the fire Standing next to me There'll be another in the waters He's holding back the seas And should I ever joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll be I'll count the joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll be I'll count the joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll be I'll count the joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll be Right. Guys, y'all can go ahead and have a seat. That is some goodness right there.
My name is Justin Wojak again, and we are so excited that you worship with us today. And if this is your first time, maybe from Easter or from Grayson Days, fill out this communication card. It is the easiest and best way for us to make a connection, letting us know what's going on. And there's also a place on the back for you to fill out any prayer requests because we have an amazing prayer team that prays over this each and every single week. We do not want you to be alone. So this is the perfect place to put those items so then that way we can know about them. We also have two awesome things happening right after the service. We have our newcomers class literally happening right down there. Um, this is your opportunity to really get to know what makes Greystone different than any other church in this area and get connected in this amazing community that we call Greystone. And then we also, in the aquarium room, out the doors to the right, we have our parent-child dedication class. So for all those um, that have never done that before, it's an awesome moment where uh, you decide, all right, I'm going to raise as a family, we're gonna raise our kids for the Lord. And so there's a class, and we're celebrating that on the 15th. And so as we move into a time of, of offering, um, we do have five ways to give. And yes, people still do send checks. I know that seems a little weird in today's age, but we wanna make giving as easy as we possibly can. So ushers, as you make your way down, I'm gonna go ahead and pray for the offering. Lord God, we just thank you for this awesome morning, God, that we were able to worship together in a great word by Jonathan about, it is about doing, Lord Jesus, God, about bringing as many people to you as we can. And so as we leave this room today, Jesus, we just ask that we'll have your eyes and your ears to see and hear from different opportunities to show your love to people, Lord God. And so we just thank you that we can continue worshiping through our offering. And God, we just commit this to you, God, in your name that we pray. Amen. So guys, Mother's Day is next Sunday. So fellas, please do not wake up next week and oh my gosh, it's Mother's Day and you don't get your wife or your mom a present. So little uh, public service announcement. Again, it is next Sunday. So um, we are doing some fun stuff with uh, some of the production elements. And so if you can send a picture of your mom and your kids or your wife and your kids to Jolin at graystonechurch.com, uh, go ahead and do that now today so then that way it's not Sunday morning and you're asking us to fit it in last minute because we probably won't make that happen. So go ahead and send those pictures in to joelin at graystonechurch.com. And we also have a special message from Jennifer. So why don't we hear what she has to say about next week? Mother's Day is right around the corner and we are just days away from a very special Sunday at Greystone. And be sure you come ready for free professional pictures for you and your family. I'm looking forward to sharing with you some of the new things God has taught me this past year as I have continued my journey in recovery. I also have asked a dear friend, Shannon, to share her amazing story with you as she has recovered from crippling anxiety. I just know that you will be encouraged to hear that you are and will always be enough in God's eyes. In addition, we understand that Mother's Day can be especially hard on those of you who have lost children. If you are someone that has suffered this loss, we will have a gift for you to pick up after the service. Most of all, we want all the women in our lives to feel loved and cared for on Mother's Day at Greystone Church. I am telling you what, that gets you excited. Thank you so much for worshiping us with today, and we'll see you all next week.